Unfortunately, blaming the horse for problems is a very, very common scenario. I see it most days of the week. Pain is the last thing that people tend to think about as being the underlying cause of why their horse does not want to do some particular thing. Um, and unfortunately, it's not just the owners that are like this, it's their people guiding them, like the trainer, the coach, their friend. Everybody thinks it must be to do with the horse's either behavior or a training issue. My name is Caroline, founder of Equitopia. As part of our mission to provide the horse industry with reliable resources that promote the compassionate training, welfare and care of horses, we reached out to world-renowned veterinarian Dr. Sue Dyson, internationally acclaimed veterinary behaviorist Dr. Janine Berger and other professionals in the industry who share their expertise in recognizing the early signs of subtle lameness. Which one of these horses has a subtle form of lameness? Horse one, Horse two, or horse three? And the answer is all three. I believe that a very high proportion of horses have some form of lameness. We did a survey of 506 sports horses which were in normal work and the owners had not recognized any underlying problem and 47% of those had either lameness or other gait abnormalities such as a stiff stilted canter that I know through my daily work are likely to be underlying pain related problems. Now that doesn't mean that they couldn't cope with those problems, some of them were low grade, but some of them were also pretty obvious. So to say that they were all low grade problems is not necessarily true. I, I see everywhere, all levels, from novice amateur competitions right through to four star events like Berlin, Badminton. I see horses that are sometimes really struggling and it is amazing that owners and riders, no matter what level, are very often unaware. Many owners and riders rely on their trainers to point out when their horse is not quite right. Trainers tend to always say, use more leg, be stronger in your back, uh, stronger bits. Working through it. You know, the horse is playing up, working through it. The horse is a little bit lame, working through it. Uh, get longer spurs. Working through it, and it's always it. What is it? Is it pain? If it's pain, and we're just working him until he either gets better or he's hurting more, then surely it's us who need to be better educated to see it before we have to make it worse. Why is it that even lifelong horse professionals have trouble recognizing gait abnormalities? We asked that question to Dr. Karen Liebrandt, who says that according to studies done in the field of ethology, there is a difference between the way a predator and a prey animal behave when they're in pain. And a horse doesn't want to show pain because um, normally, in nature, he is haunted by uh, lions or whatever, and he doesn't want to show the lion that he is in pain. And we have to pay really good attention to find it. And there is absolutely no doubt that if the horse is uncomfortable, or worse still, in serious pain, that they will adjust their gait, they will adjust their way of going, because they are uncomfortable in an effort to try and relieve this discomfort. Horses are very good in compensating. So if a horse has pain on his left front leg, he will change his way to his right front leg and he will change a few things in his back all to compensate and he, has get a, he will get a little bit of pain in his back and a little bit of pain in his hind legs. Okay, she's lame. We have various scenarios of the onset of lameness. Some horses will have sudden onset lameness in a single limb during a period of exercise, for example, related to a misstep um, or they stumbled. Whereas in others, the problem is much more insidious in onset. And the horse starts by perhaps being a little more reluctant to respond to the rider's leg aid, or you may feel the horse is slightly unlevel, turning to the right, but when you're doing a large diameter circle you don't feel anything. And those pro problems tend to be slowly, slowly progressive. And 
the rider tends to accept these things. They don't realize they're progressing because particularly with one horse riders, they don't feel anything different. They're not getting on another horse, which feels very, very different. And then you have some professional level people who are so good at compensating. So they use their, their leg a little bit more strongly. They alter the horse's balance. They sit up a little bit more. And so they're masking the problems until they're getting worse. Horses, uh can appear to be more sound, more level, when they are so-called put together, but it's only because everything is shortening and the difference is in fact less. There is a difference, but it's less. So as you release them, you see a bigger difference and it looks more obvious. But it doesn't mean to say that just because they're so-called put together that they're going in any better way. I think the longer a problem has been there, the more severe the underlying damage is likely to be.